What is up, guys? Welcome back to Tech Chat Chat Episode 5. Armando and Roberto talking about technology out there. We're talking about GPUs, CPUs, games, uh, funny business going on in the gaming industry, funny business going on just about anything with anything related to tech, anything related with PC gaming and console gaming. And like always, we've got a list of subjects to discuss this week and they just don't seem to be getting dull ever. Um, so we'll get right into our very first topic. Well, hold on, hold on, Ooh. where are you now? Uh, there's no, no stock, I, I see no stock, no stock behind you. Yeah, so. actually, uh, <laughs> if you take a look behind me, it's not looking too good. Um, what do we got there? I don't even know what that is. XFX? It's an RX 550, Ooh, I think. Ooh, I think I just time traveled back to 2017. Uh, there's a five. What is that? A five fifty? Yeah, RX five fifty. There are all RX five. Two RX five fifties available to purchase. Not bad. Not What's bad that? An EVGA eight hundred fifty watt power supply. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll just take that one right off the shelf. <laughs> Look at those prices. What is that? Two hundred. One hundred and fifty nine. No, 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 no. It looks RX like fifty five. Two thousand dollars. <laughs> that looks like a two right there. <laughs> Which is actually very realistic. I'm sure you could find a 550 for some ridiculous price, or maybe someone would want to trade their Honda Civic for one. Oh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is very. Uh, this is in relation to actually what's going on in real life. Shelves are empty. If you guys are trying to get a GPU. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So enough talking about that because that subject just hurts. Um, which is what we're actually talking about next, is it not? Or are we talking about well, CPUs? We're going to start off with a CPU. <laughs> CPUs. Uh, some good okay. news for current Ryzen owners. Let me take over. I'll share my screen. This is Ryzen 2? Zen 2? No. No. No, no. no. Oh. This is a... Do you see my screen? I do not. Here we go. Let me know. I do see your screen. Uh, hopefully you're yeah. at 16, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> good. So yeah, no, this is a this is a uh, a tuner built by an AMD uh, enthusiast, basically Yuri Bubbly. It's a yeah, bubbly, bubbly. It's a bubbly, yes, bubbly. Bubbly. <laughs> the creator of this tool basically announced a new update coming. Uh, in this version 2.1, there will be a special profile called PX Profile, which is described as the best solution for gamers, benchmarks, and other workloads. So basically, it's a good profile for everything. It's an advanced profile that takes the Hybrid OC feature to the next level. Now, the cool thing about this is that when you look at his his chart that he shows here, it could hit 5 gigahertz. Nice, with this less is, voltage. With less voltage. Okay. So that is incredible. Wow. So it, a 5 gigahertz Ryzen could be possible with this software. With a 5900X. Well, 5800X, 5900X, 5950X, Oof. basically. Maybe even the 5600X. And older generations as well. It does. It's not specifically set for Ryzen uh, Zen 3, so... Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this this will launch... It's available right now to uh, Patreon users. And he's saying that the public release has... Well, there's no date yet for the public release, but it should come out in springtime, according to him. I would love to try this, but I do not have a Ryzen CPU. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this going to be? A, is this going to be a BIOS download? No, no, it's a tuner software. Okay, so it's going to be done from Windows. Yeah. All right. Okay. Interesting. Five gigahertz Ryzen. This would be cool to have. If we had a Ryzen CPU, I'd definitely try this out. I would. This would be a good tech review. Yep. So this is good news for people who have Ryzen CPUs. It doesn't say it's specifically for Zen 3. It looks like all Zens could probably... Well, again, I'm not sure if it's... Uh, well, it doesn't say it's limited to Zen 3, so again, Zen 3 and Z2 are close to the 5 gigahertz mark, so maybe there uh, will be more of a chance for them hitting the 5 gigahertz. Right. But, uh, anyways, this will be good to see going going down the road. Yeah, it's performance upgrade, it's heat reduction and voltage reduction. I mean, what, what else do you want from that? No benchmarks, oh, yeah. eh? No benchmarks, okay. nothing. Nothing yet. Hmm. So... That's good news. Start off with good news for once on that these is good news. chats. Now, if only the CPUs were available. <laughs> this you know, is, I saw this it, is I exclusive saw... to people who own <laughs> the processors. You know, there, are, there are sales out there. I saw a Zen 2 3600X and a motherboard for like $400 packaged on Facebook. Should have bought it. 
Facebook Marketplace. Used. Used, yeah, for three weeks. Okay. Person, I don't think knew what they had at that point. It could be. Just yeah. wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, that's a mistake on my. I should have purchased it. Um, that that would make you a scalper, though. <laughs> no, no, no. I would have built a second CPU. Okay, PC, that's sorry. true. Secondary gaming, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Nice. Let's get to the next topic. So we're gonna talk. Next few topics will be about games only. Okay. I like so, the next topic. Yeah. So the first, uh, let me just say that the uh, Clock Tuner article came from uh, VideoCars.com. This next article comes from WCCF Tech. Uh, Metro Exodus PC Enhanced Edition announced with NVIDIA DLSS 2.0 support Ooh. and more. PS5 and Xbox XS upgraded detailed as well as they will also be getting an enhanced version. All right. So, according to the article, a new Metro Exodus Edition called Metro Exodus PC Enhanced Edition will be coming this week, featuring new likes of uh, DLS 2.0 and some more uh, RTX ray tracing uh, features. Nice. So PC players will be taking advantage of our... Uh, so they basically mentioned in the press release that their PC players are, will uh, take advantage of the new ray traced lightning pipeline that they have uh, built in to get the ultimate ray tracing experience. The upgrade is so extensive, it will require ray tracing capable GPU as a minimum spec, and we'll need to deliver this version as a separate product. It's not a simple patch to the base game. Instead, it will be offered as an extra entitlement to all existing Metro Exodus PC players. Wow, okay. The PC Enhanced Edition will offer additional ray tracing features, include advanced ray trace reflections and support for DLS 2.0 on NVIDIA hardware, which offers sharper image details and increased frame rates and display resolutions. The current ray tracing and DLS implementation are limited to GI global illumination and I think it's DLS 1.0 in uh, Exodus. So it's, it's, it's one item in the ray tracing pipeline that they're using the accelerators, you know, the RTX cores basically, mm -hmm. to push out the uh, global illumination. And the DLSS 1.0 implementation isn't that great. So, we'll see, this looks looking good. So even uh, the Xbox, even the console boys will be able to get in, boys and girls will be able to get involved with this new enhanced version. Nice. So the, the enhanced version on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S will run a 4K60. Uh, the base game and DLS, DLC expansion will feature both uh, global illumination and ray trace immersion lighting techniques pioneer in the expansion across all content. And the Xbox Series S will get a 1080p target, but there's no frame rate to be determined at this time. Okay. I'm guessing it's going to be either 30 frames per second or, or maybe 60, but I doubt it yeah. for the Series S. This is good. Uh, Metro Exodus is a good game. It I is. May purchase, yeah, I may purchase this, the enhanced version. I have both the Metro 30... Uh, Metro 30 what is it, 2033? Yeah. And Last Light, I think. Mm -hmm. I have both of them. I've never finished them. Maybe get back into them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You've never finished them. Never. It's, they basically, on sale, purchased, played 10 minutes, haven't touched it. <laughs> Just to benchmark them. That's it. Just to see your FPS and then log right out. That's right. And... <laughs> <laughs> so this might be another one for ray tracing benchmarks. I never bought, the, I bought. I haven't bought the original. I played the original one on Xbox Game Pass. I right. tried out Xbox Game Pass, and this was included. I played it a bit. It was pretty cool, but now with more of these uh, uh, RT RT enhancements and DLSS, it's uh, pull me back in. I may purchase the uh, the game with this new version. Basically. Right. So we're going back and getting old games, and we're well, it's not modifying that old. them. The game's not that old. I think it's two years old, maybe. One year and a half. That's a a, that's old in gaming. Gaming. Uh, oh, <laughs> Unless it's GTA Five we're talking about. But oh, that's different. GTA Five has existed since 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Two more oh. years, it's it's going to be a decade. <laughs> I know it's sad. That's it's crazy. Quite sad. Next topic. So Rainbow Six Quarantine. We talked about it last week. It's officially going to be named Parasite. So Ubisoft uh... has confirmed or changed the name of Rainbow Six Quarantine. <laughs> to Rainbow Six Parasite. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's, first they're saying that it's a placeholder and it could change, but I doubt it. I think yeah. this is the name. This will be the name for the game coming up. And uh, for those who haven't been keeping up, Rainbow Six Parasite is basically a focused co-op PvE play -in game and it will expand a story established in the uh, outbreak event that happened in 2018. Uh, would put players against uh, other uh, NPCs that were infected with a mysterious alien virus. 
So it's a three-player squad based survival FPS developed by an entirely new team at Montreal, where we are. Basically, the Rainbow Six operators will face off against a mysterious threat infecting human hosts and their surroundings. Prepare to launch into a tense, chaotic, and totally unpredictable mission as you and your squad risk everything every time you step into a quarantine. Wow. So, so intense. That is such an intense statement. <laughs> it's somewhat <laughs> realistic. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I wonder if this is really going to be any different from, let's say, the division entering the dark zones. Uh, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's it, you never have you played Rainbow Six? I I played Rainbow Six. Yes. Siege. Siege. I watched gameplay. I don't yeah. have the game. Okay, so but... I played this. I actually played this event, and it was really fun. This is definitely a to be purchased. Um, if depending, it's not going to be full price. I don't think, but it's definitely, definitely a. Uh, to be purchased. So it's going to be a much more fast-paced gameplay versus Division? It has nothing to do... It's not even close to the Division. You're, like, in a sandbox. (laughs) A small sandbox. All right. Okay, like, uh, you basically have a small area where you have to infiltrate and attack and capture enemies or kill enemies. All right. Or Division is open world, right? Yeah. MMO light. It's completely different. Okay. I guess I'll have to wait and see. It's a buy for me, too, so... Oh, buy from you. Ooh. Yes. So. <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll buy it as long as you're buying it and keeping it, not just telling me to buy it. How many games am I stuck with when you told me to buy them and you would never end up getting them? Oh, My man. library is full of those games. Too many. <laughs> Vermintide. <laughs> you should have a filter. Uh, I should. You should have a filter for games I told you to buy that I never purchased. Yes, Roberto's <laughs> list of <laughs> single-player games for life. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one on the list comes from the dark side of gaming. Um, this is something we're both interested in, but yes. again, uh, it's been delayed. So Amazon's New World, again, delayed, now releasing August 2021. That makes so Amazon claims it's using this extra time to add substantial improvements while polishing and fine-tuning the whole game. Uh, the alpha will uh, continue in the months to come and expand the testing by opening up European servers uh, on March 30th. Uh, the closed beta will begin July 20th this year. Now, this does look very interesting. The problem is Amazon Gaming has not been great. Mm-hmm. Two games that they released in the past have both failed. Which games this are could those? Be, uh, I forgot the names. I forgot the names. Um, they're just buried. Okay, got they're it. They're just buried. <laughs> One of them, basically, they launched it, and it was so bad, they put it back into beta, and then they completely shut it down. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty bad. Okay, but I think this... they also made a they made a game on the Grand Tour also that failed. Okay. Jeremy Clarkson in a video game. <laughs> <in a jail. laughs> Bloody oh, hell. <laughs> yeah, but this this has a lot of eyes on it. This is very similar to a lot of games. Um, it, it's an open world game. Uh, I've seen some gameplay of it. It it it's I wouldn't call it sandbox, but it's free roam. Um, I think there's world PvP events, there's world PvE events, there's there's a lot of stuff going on in there. There's a lot of promises behind this game. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I I saw it, and I liked the characters, I liked the, the content, I liked it, I was excited, and then this is the second time it's being, being delayed now. So it kind of concerns me. Oh, I don't have any hopes for this game, to be honest. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. It's <laughs> so over. it's a no-buy for you? Uh, I'll, I'll try it out, but uh, I hope this comes on Steam, first of all. I, I know there was hesitance of releasing games on Steam, but they did release the last one. Yeah. It failed. Um, but yeah. Maybe uh, they're going to have their own platform. The name was Crucible. Crucible, yes, 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 yes. The last one was Crucible. Oh, it's so forgettable. Yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully this is good. Hopefully it uh, breaks the trend of Amazon terrible games. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Well, your refunds will be easy on that game, so. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Call, Call of Duty. Duty. Black Ops Cold War Season 2 drops uh, next week. This is looking good. So Activision and Treyarch have announced that Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Warzone Season 2 will drop next week and release a new cinematic trailer showing off the free updates, jungle setting, and some of its operators and weapons. So uh, this, this article is quite uh, it's a few days old since this article dropped there's been more news that came out about this so there's going to have an, there's going to be an outbreak mode with zombies on a large scale map nice. and the war zone map basically will have a uh, they're adding these items where there's going to be a tanker 
that's out of control and nobody can communicate with that's heading straight to the Warzone map. And apparently some people are hearing the ground rumble in Warzone. So uh, to Whoa. go with the thematic season progression, that tanker most likely has zombies, and I believe zombies will infect the Warzone map as oh, well. Oh, crap. Wow. So this outbreak mode, definitely trying next week. It's a large-scale zombie map. It's going to be insane. We should do a live definitely stream try. of this. Yes. We are definitely going to be playing let's, this next let's week. Let's do a live stream of this on day one when it comes out. Yeah. And Warzone is, and this will be on Warzone, so that that is free. It's a free download. And, no, no, this no. Is the, there's two. There's outbreak mode is Black Ops, Cold okay. War, and Warzone is continuing with their thematic trend of progression into a season. Okay. And the season will contain a tanker, apparently that's heading towards the map. Right. Which is out of control with no communication. Nobody can communicate with it. Apparently, this tanker would be infested with zombies. And there's something going on with the ground in Warzone as well, where it's, it's there's hearing vibration and rumbling. Okay. So we should get back into it next week. Definitely. See what's going on. But this outbreak mode, um, I, I like. I even like the multiplayer of Cold War. There's, there's four maps. That I like it too. Cold. I like Warzone too. I enjoyed the zombie yep. mode during the Halloween time. That was super fun. Um, I mean, you take something oh, yeah, that's good. something that's fun and make it even more fun. Like we we played that nonstop. I think we played for three and a half hours at some point, and you were like, "What time is it?" I'm like, "It's late." <laughs> <laughs> So good, good to hear that. That that makes me happy. Uh, Call of Duty. If you're an FPS fan uh, and you like battle royale maps, especially for the second part, this is a download. Yep. Awesome. All right. Next game. We'll, we'll try it this next week when it launches. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Stay tuned for a live stream of that. Yep. Next on the list from WCC, oh. Diablo Two. Diablo oh. Two Resurrected oh. will feature both classic and remastered visuals game is coming to all major consoles so uh, a reddit user basically leaked a uh, information regarding this uh, basically he was he correctly he correctly leaked monster hunter rise so he also leaked this basically okay he's basically saying this diablo 2 resurrected will feature both classic and remastered visuals and no major gameplay change players will also be able to switch between two visuals on the fly kind of like how uh, the, the master chief collection has it for uh, the remastered uh, Halo games. Okay. Uh, among new features will be included will be controller support, toggable auto gold pickup, a shared stash, and more. According to Leaker, Diablo 2 Resurrect will be on all major consoles, including network, Nintendo Switch, Whoa. with cross progression support, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's basically more detailed coming from uh, Leaker. Uh, it's a remastered original game, Larry Runs, under the new 3D 60 FPS graphics engine. So the gameplay is identical. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to flip, as they mentioned before, to each each uh, the remaster or the original version, and uh, a couple of uh, quality of life features like auto gold pickup and so on. Okay. This looks great. Dynamic lighting, but still dark as the original. Right. Cross progression. How about uh, mobile gamers? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Talking about. Or you, why games. not? <laughs> nope. This is good. All I right. may get this on a PC, and I may get it on Switch and just switch through them basically uh, if it's, it's, it's cross progression or I may get it on PS5 I don't know I may buy two copies just because I love Diablo and Diablo 2 was my favorite game of the Diablo series yes it was except for the hacking <laughs> we won't talk about that <laughs> alright that's fun and so people that already owned the original Diablo 2 uh, too bad this is another game right this is yep. straight up remastered exactly. like it buy it pay for it Blizzard needs your money let's go I like it. I will buy it. And on the Diablo trend, we have Diablo 4. Diablo 4 gameplay trailer introduces the Rogue class. Mm -hmm. So Blizzard has just announced the Rogue class from Diablo 4. In order to celebrate this announcement, the team released a new trailer. Uh, Diablo 4 is an always online game. It will not offer an offline mode. Uh, we also have cosmetic microtransactions. Also, they're looking at cross-play support for all platforms. New engine, new graphics, new animation. This game will not be released this year, but it's looking good. It's looking good. Let's just forget about the mobile Diablo game and just focus on this. <laughs> yeah, interesting. The rogue, the rogue class was actually added into uh, Diablo 2 at the, and the last. Uh, I think it was the last DLC expansion. Expansion, yeah. yeah. That were two classes that came in, and the rogue came in, and that was one of my favorite characters. Of course, uh, your typical. Glass cannon build, I would say. You know, high DPS, but a little bit spongy. 
I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to these type of uh, relaxing hack and slash type games where stuff can get super exciting for one moment and then the next moment you're just, you know, you're casually ripping through a bunch of enemies looking for loot. So I am I am excited about this. But I guess that's going to be a while from now. Yeah, sometime next year on our new Alder Lake CPU backed <laughs> with 4000 series GPU. And DDR5. And DDR5. <laughs> And uh, gigahertz. <laughs> maybe I'll be using a 750 Ti because I won't have a, a GPU at that time. Who knows? The, the way it's going, you're going to have a bulldozer CPU with a 7970 Radeon from 2011 connected to it. And I would be paying the same amount of price I'd be paying for that for an RTX yep. 30 right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. More, more gaming news. WCCF Tech uh, Overwatch 2 Hero Missions will be in the hundreds and they'll feature dynamic weather. So there was a behind-the-scenes video release where there were several items that came out for the sequel to the uh, Overwatch 1. To begin, the video showcased two brand new locations that are based on iconic real-life cities, so Rome and New York. And uh, basically with the former set to be one of the maps used in the brand new push mode. Combat okay. has been improved in a var variety of areas, ra ranging from animations to sound, which all weapons getting a 2.0 sound pass. Nice. So uh, they're saying this should improve visceral feeling of hitting items. So Overwatch 2 Hero Missions, there will be hundreds of those. Apparently, they will also come in hand when the characters progression. And Blizzard showcased a newly introduced talent system where players will be able to customize their characters oh, in very nice. different ways. Oh, nice. Nice. Other than Given that, Yep, I know. Given that this cooperative PV side of Overwatch 2 balance is less of a concern, and the designers can implement some rather wild options, such as skills that can stun for longer. Missions will also feature dynamic weather, including sandstorms and snowstorms, and they can take place at different times of the day. Sweet. Last but not least, they showed the updated looks from McCree. It's high noon. <laughs> Farah, Reaper, and Windowmaker. <laughs> Facial animations have uh, been overhauled to uh, convey emotions during the story elements. So, I'm mean, looking forward to this. Look at the, the screenshots are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Same art style as usual. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm welcome a PvE, PvE component of Overwatch. I like sure. the... Uh, they, their uh, seasonal events that were PvE based, I enjoyed them. Yeah. These should be larger scale. Oh, we should get back into Overwatch. I, I, I'm ready to dive into that anytime. That was that was fun. It was an easy to get into game. You, yep. you just jump in, in and you out. play for a couple yep. hours and you're done. There's no... Yep. Uh, other than some of your friends not having proper hardware, but yep. <laughs> it's fun. I, this will run on an iGPU anyway. So Well, yeah, Overwatch no, 1. No, not an iGPU, but... The, well, maybe you'll be able to get 30 frames at low on like a, a an EMD APU. Yeah, I, definitely. All nice. right, back into hardware. This comes from Tech Power Up. First comprehensive review of the Core i7 11700K. It's an engineering Ooh. sample. So basically, uh, they got an engineering sample that's close to basically what the release sample will be. Uh, basically, so they tested it. So they tested the 8-core 16-thread 11700K against a Ryzen 7 5800X in synthetics. Basically, they were negligible, trading blows back and forth, and um, it was basically a wash with a 5800X in terms of gaming. Okay. Uh, it does beat the 10700K uh, in all the areas, though. Yeah. So the, uh, the Comet Lake model. Uh, performance side, the 11700K is shown to have significantly higher power draw, with the whole system power draw being 27% higher than the 1500X when measuring Prime 95. In real world, real world scenarios, such as gaming or GPU power draws added, the whole system power draw percentage difference should come down. Uh, they're saying the 11700K is not a hot processor, running up to 18 degrees cooler than the 1500X under load. I have no idea if that's even true. I, right. something, doesn't, something doesn't add up, but... Yeah, and Wait. what type of cooler was used on on both of those? That's that's that, uh... that does not add up whatsoever. So yeah. here's Far Cry, here's eleven seven hundred K. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's in line with the uh, with the uh, basically uh, the Ryzen th the Zen threes. Yeah, ten nine. It's not that much faster than the ten nine hundred K. No, well, it's not. It's uh, basically a wash. Ten seven hundred F is here, but whatever. I guess if you overclock the 10700F, it's going to match the 10, 11700K at this resolution. Yeah. And the higher you go, the difference is negligible. Not even be a matter. It won't even matter. Right. What else we got here? Metro Exodus. Ah, it's a wash everywhere. Look at this. It's a wash. Yeah. 
What's the point? <laughs> and Dawn of War, but Dawn of War, oh boy. Why is Dawn of War so much quicker? So the 11700K is tied with the, the Zen 3s. Yeah. With the but they kill PPX. Common Lake. Like yeah. 20 frames per second, they kill Common Lake. Wow. That's weird. Weird, weird, weird. weird, weird. But yeah, so it looks like the Rocket Lake will tie Zen 3 in terms of gaming. Mm -hmm. And of course, good. none of this will matter if you're not playing at 1080p. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're higher than 1080p, it doesn't really care. Mm -hmm. you, you could have any CPU. It's, it's all GPU bottleneck at that right. point. All right. Alder Lake, WCCF Tech has uh, posted some... Well, these rumors come from everywhere. Even Tom's Heart... Uh, not Tom's Hardware. Moore's Law posted this as well on his, on his YouTube channel. But uh, Alder Lake, 16-core desktop, desktop CPUs. Rumor for September this year will feature up to 20% IPC over Tiger Lake. So in a post over at HKEPC, it is stated that Intel's Rocket Lake desktop CPUs will be available on the 15th of March 2021. Nobody cares because Rocket Lake is there. <laughs> um, so compared to the 11th gen family, the 12th gen Auto Lake will be, offer more cores, new architecture, architecture, and a brand new process node. This will be Intel's first new process node in over six years since oh Broadwell. Oh my <laughs> god. Wow. Uh, oh man. man, they milked the 14 nanometer... Uh, Chip, yeah, like big time, big time. Yeah, yeah. So, Alder Lake CPUs will feature the 10 nanometer enhanced superfin process node that delivers 15% reduction in power consumption. While the Golden Cove architecture is expected to deliver IPC gains of at least 20% over Willow Cove. For comparison, Cypress Cove cores on the Rocket Lake CPUs uh, are around 18% IPC gains over Sky Lake and Willow Cove. Does improve on that slightly. Mm -hmm. In general, Golden Coves. Golden Cove cores will deliver a 40 to 50% IPC Ooh. uplift over Skylake. Over Skylake. Oh, Skylake. Ooh, we're going back. Yeah. We're going back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, over Skylake. So that's pretty good. Now, here's the, here's the thing, though. The Grace Mount Atom cores, the small cores, the performance, the performance is suggested to be similar or slightly better than Skylake. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But with a much lower power draw. Yeah. An overall IPC gain for the complete auto lake chip is expected to, to be around 16 to 18 percent, which is quite good. And Moore's law was stating it's even like it should be to the higher end of that. So right. that's damn pretty good. Uh, Alder Lake's true competitor is Zen 4, but those those CPUs won't be seen the light of day until 2022. Um, unbelievable. So I think this year we're going to see a, a, a Zen 3 plus. That could be on the six nanometer process node. I'm not sure what nanometer that the Zen 3 refresh is going to be. Yeah. But uh, it won't be DDR5. That's the thing. Yeah. Well, all the link will be. They'll have to put something out. That's 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 what the refresh is going to be about. It's just a match until putting something out. But. Uh, it's getting me excited again. Yeah, Last week, definitely. The, the engineering samples were leaked. I wasn't that excited. But they were probably really low, low, low clock. Mm -hmm. These, th this rumor is exciting me. I'm definitely interested in upgrading. I hopefully, hopefully it's this because of DDR5. Yeah. But 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 I read that the the mobiles will be compatible with DDR4, so okay. you don't have to go DDR5 right away. Okay. Mm, I I would do it, unless you're running like 128 gigs of RAM and <laughs> you spent some money on that. <laughs> but again, like if you have high clocks DDR4, you want to yeah. wait for the higher clock DDR5, you could just swap. Use your DDR4. Yeah. If there's not that much of a performance degradation using DDR4, mm -hmm. and wait for higher speed DDR5. Yeah. Again, I don't know. Let's wait and see. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because it'll be lower clock speeds on the on the when uh, DDR4 first came out. I think the highest you could get was around 2400 megahertz, something like that. Yeah. I remember when I got my. Uh, 5820K, that was the highest memory I could find at the time, so... Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I, I'm thinking I'll use my DDR4 sticks if I upgrade and then wait for the higher memory DDR5. Higher speed DDR5. So how... So the board part, the board companies are going to uh, provide some sort of adapters? The Z690 is back... Will be... Well, whatever it's going to be. Okay. The, the, 70, the LGA1700 will be backwards compatible. So there's going to be the same amount of pins on DDR5 and DDR4 so. Yeah. Okay. So it's not going to be like physical uh, restraints like DDR3 versus DDR4, or there's less pins. And okay. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. All right. Let's go nice. into some GPU discussions here. 
Zotac. Zotac. Videocars.com. Zotac <laughs> promotes mining farm. Tags it. Hashtag gaming. <laughs> what? What? Dummies. If you were hoping to get a Zotac <laughs> graphics card to play games, you may need to wait a bit longer. The company is now publicly endorsing GPU mining farms featuring their own graphics. On graphics. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this post. So they removed the tweet because they were, it was, uh, there was a lot of backlash. Yeah. But this is the tweet. Do you believe this? That's crazy. An army of Zotac gaming GPUs hungry for coin. Look at this. <laughs> My God. That's terrible. Your 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 main consumer, your your targeted consumer, is not able to get the product that you sell. That's that's the crazy part. Don't use the hashtag gaming. Hashtag gaming with this. <laughs> oh my god. That's, uh, uh, they, that's they deserve uh, everything. Every every backlash they got. Definitely, they definitely, and keep it coming. <laughs> yep. It's not Do like not they made. Zotac. It's not like they made an amazing product ever. I mean. Well, they again the Zotac App Extreme models were fantastic. Like they were fantastic cards. <laughs> I had one. I had a 980 Ti. So that and was. that is the last one you ever had, and the I last one you ever owned. Yeah. <laughs> but that thing was massive. It was like a three and a half slot beast. Anyways, uh, it was overclocked to the end of the time. That thing, my god. That's but, back uh, when, yeah. before they endorsed mining. <laughs> Let's just skip. This makes me sick. <laughs> yes. All right. So a uh, Michael Wong, the founders of. Mikael Wong, sorry, the founders of a tour metal brand specializing in fanless PC hardware, published interesting photos with an RTX 3080 in one of their cases. So this is a fanless, basically. Uh, passive cooling, passive yeah. Cooling. So the tour metal UP10 is an ultra premium fanless case that retails at 770 USD. This is a combination with never in stock and never at MRSRP. <laughs> <RTX 3080. laughs> Simply means that we are looking at a very expensive setup. Mm -hmm. So the, the system packed in, uh, with uh, into the chat, the components into the chassis were a 65 watt AMD Ryzen 5 5600X CPU, with the graphics card used in Asus RTX 3080 Tough Gaming. It's unclear which mode the graphics card was tested, but the whole system consumed 410 watts of power. Mm -hmm. A burn and test that was run for four minutes and 17 seconds. Basically, uh, the RTX 3080 hit 30, 93 degrees. Which is basically the upper limit for the GPU, but not necessarily necessarily for the components, as the GDDR6 can easily go over 100 degrees Celsius. Right. Uh, out of 410 watts consumed for the whole system, the power supply feeds 347 watts to the GPU alone. Oh man. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's pretty cool. A fanless uh, 3080. I would not get this for. Any means no. of gaming or uh, just no. Absolutely not. I mean, this is just, uh, look what I can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, 93 be. degrees Celsius. I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I thought it was 83 degrees Celsius where the clock, where the GPU starts to actually uh, thermal throttle. Oh. Mm. Well, it does throttle depending on, the, it will drop by 15 so the the tiers are by 15 megahertz, right? Right. So the the higher the hotter it gets, mm -hmm. it will drop by 15 megahertz. Right. But there is a a wall where it hits at a certain degree where it'll just tank the clock. Yeah, up. totally. Yeah, of course. But thermal throttling does begin at 83 degrees. I've 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 tested that. I I know that for a fact. 93 is the wall, I guess. Could you call it? Would you call it like TJ Maxx? No. No. <laughs> But it's just a cool design. I like it. I like what they did. It's a cool case study. Uh, but definitely would not. Uh, <laughs> hey, you can't have that on your desk. <laughs> I would not have it on my desk. <laughs> Get fry an egg on it. <laughs> nice. Uh, next, next topic: the Sapphire Radeon Six Thousand Toxic picture. So this is a little. This uh, so hardware and box actually got the sixty nine hundred XT Toxic and did this testing. Mm. Basically, uh, I think he hit 2700 megahertz overclocked. Wow. It's just an overclocked. I, it doesn't, I, I, the, the RDNA 2 does not scale good, mm -hmm. I find, with overclocks. I mean, he got a couple of 5, 6% more with, it, with his manual overclock. Right. But the uh, 6900 XT has a, Sapphire Toxic has a button, a software button where you press it and it pushes it to 2600 megahertz, I believe. Okay. Out of the box. And then he pushed it 100 megahertz higher, and it basically overall was like a 5% increase over stock. Okay. Nothing major. It's still good to get. And it's very quiet. So basically, the card is a, has a 360 millimeter rad yeah. connected to it. 
the IO bracket, I believe he showed, was a one HDMI and three uh, display ports, mm -hmm. no USB type of connector. So, uh, and it was a dual eight pin and a six pin power connector. Okay. So yeah, go to Hardware Unbox. He actually tested this out. Great channel, and uh, the performance metrics are there. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks good. It's a massive radiator. I yeah. Don't know, like... <laughs> you need you need the case real estate if you have an, if you already have a AIO cooler for your CPU plus this. I mean, I had that type of setup once where I had liquid cooling on the CPU and then I had the 1080 Ti. Uh, uh, what was the EVGA version with the water cooler? But that was just a 120 rad. And already with all of those cables running around inside your case, you will really have your work cut out for you trying to arrange it and make it look good. This is this is a big boy right here. Yep. Very quiet. Very, very quiet. Very cool. Yeah, very I'd cool. imagine so. Three fans. Three 120 yeah. millimeter fans. Uh, probably set it up with a good, um, a good fan profile and, and you're set. Yep. All right, next article. So, uh, from WCCF Tech, the 6700 XT featuring the RDNA 2 GPU architecture and 12 gigabytes of VRAM is now rumored to launch the 18th of March. The graphics card will be first of many mainstream GPU offerings from the Radeon 6000 series with a sub-500 pricing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, you won't be able to find this thing. Yep. And B, if you do, it won't be $500 US. Nope. nope. So Cal Catlin basically said uh, he's usually good with his uh, leaks, March 18th. Okay. And uh, if it is the sub 500, and it's and if it's technically faster than this 3060 Ti, it's not a bad GPU. Mm -hmm. I know one of our friends who was an AMD AMD fanboy. This is something you should look at. Yeah. Well, we'll bring it up to him. But this is a definitely good GPU. Uh, 3060 Ti is like a 2080. 20 it's 2080 Super. Sorry, 2080 Super yeah. performance. This will be a bit quicker than it, so it'll land right between a 2080 Super and a 2080 Ti in terms of performance yeah. for less than $500 if if you could find it at that price. Yeah, uh, it's not too bad. Do, are, is uh, off topic, but is RDNA2 getting a hit on any of their mining hash rates? Is AMD putting anything out about this or no? I haven't seen anything. Haven't but RDNA2 doesn't mine as good as. Uh, okay. Uh, RDNA one or Ampere, okay, yeah, or Ampere. Okay, yeah. so maybe it's already done <laughs> from from birth. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't read into it, but uh, yeah. So this thing here um, looks like a good buy. If it's at that price and if it's available, it looks like it's a good buy. Yeah, uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll to, I'll be uh, pressing refresh on New Egg on release day. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All nice. right, back to Intel news. Look at this. Intel uh, 11900K packaging has been released. What is this? Who thought this was good? Like, we have the i9-9900K with the Octo... Oh, that's ball. beautiful. That's great. That is beautiful. This here, I don't... That, what is this? Oh, my God. This is the regular i9 mm -hmm. with the KF. But look at this. Well, if you buy two of them, you could piece them together like Lego, oh, I assume. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I like the new logo for the core uh, process. Sure, like sure, the, but that's a logo. Yeah, <laughs> but this box is just completely terrible. Hey, that's, what the... That has jagged edges. I mean, people could hurt themselves on that. Yeah. <laughs> In today's society, we, we can't pull that off. Sir, what happened? I stabbed myself <laughs> with a core i9 box. <laughs> oh, oh uh, man. Rocket League. Rocket League can't get any worse. Nope, hold my beer. <laughs> Oh my god. All right, so the other versions are all going to be regular boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Let's get to Nvidia news, the big <laughs> news this week. So, as every outlet has talked about this, Nvidia is limiting the hash rate on the 3060s and they will launch their CPU. Sorry, the CMP mining professional cards. Yeah. So, basically uh the 3060 will launch with the halving of the hash rate, artificial halving of the hash rate. Okay. Forward, uh, basically, uh, if you want to hash, if you want to mine, you have to buy the new CMP line. Basically, these are 10 gigabyte model GPUs. I think there's an eight and a six. Yeah, there is mm -hmm. at, at the bottom. With no display out ports. So NVIDIA initially announced four CMP HX cards were intended for Ethereum mining at hash rates from 25. MH uh, at 125 watts to 86 MH at 320 watts. Okay. Um, 
if you look at the power consumption, uh, G, the ampere is likely used for the 50 and 90, and uh, GA102 have amperes looking like the 50 and 90, and the GA104 and 106 are for the lower models. Bad news is ampere GPUs will still end up mining products. The good news is that starting with the 3060, hash rates are halved, making miners less prone to purchase the GPUs uh, that are made for gamers. Right. So the older version cards will be much more favorable all of a sudden. So yeah, so so uh, we'll get into that about what's happening with the older version cards. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, there's NVIDIA saying, initially said it's just a software update from right. a driver perspective to half the hash rate in half. Right. So, but they updated that statement. Uh, basically, in an official blog post, this comes from videocards.com, the company announced that the, this is a driver implementation. However, shortly after the announcement, members of the tech media have started receiving more information from NVIDIA regarding the app implementation. For starters, this technology will not only work for Windows operating system, but will also work for Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically confirmed that the anti-crypto, anti well, Brian Del Rizzo, uh, basically a global PR for GeForce, confirmed that the anti-crypto technology works as a secure handshake between the driver, the GPU, and the BIOS. Mm -hmm. Later confirms this is indeed a BIOS implementation and explains how 3016 very early tests also saw the limited performance. The technology mm -hmm. does not need the driver to work, they're saying. Okay. So we also learned that future implementations of said technology, uh, back in January, Kemi 7, uh, basically the leaker who predicted NVIDIA and Pure Specs, this guy's been bang on with any of his uh, leaks. Yeah. Uh, basically said Jensen has started a battle against mining. This was done mm -hmm. in, on, uh, he said it a long time ago. And basically now the, he's saying that the current cards that exist will be end of life. Will Whoa. come end of life. Basically new cards will come out with this new uh, uh, bias lock implementation. Okay. All right. So NVIDIA would relaunch its existing SKUs under a new device ID. This means that future 3090, 80, 70, 60 Ti models will carry a different ID mm -hmm. and feature the anti-crypto algorithm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so of course. I, in my opinion, I think they're going to refresh the lineup. Yeah. You're going to see the 3080 Ti, 3070 Ti, I don't know, maybe a 3095, and a, maybe 3060 Ti Super. Yeah. It's going to be completely refreshed. New models... Uh, more GP, more memory, more performance mm -hmm. to combat AMD and to carry on these mining uh, implementations, the anti-miner implementations. Okay. So that means oh. our GPUs may be worth more. I, I think so, definitely. Our 3080s will be worth more. Because we can mine. I think you can make about 10 bucks a day with uh, just one card. Quite a bit. I think uh, 3080s are close. You can get up to 100, uh, 100 hash rate with Ethereum on just a 3080. That's that's a lot. I mean, yes, they do yeah. draw more power, but uh, if I was to think back to some mining experience in the past, RX 580s were barely pulling around 28, 29 hash rates, and you would have five of those together. So uh, yeah, think about that. And I mean, what? And those all had BIOS hacks on them. Those those cards, every card we, every card my friends were mining yes. with. Uh, had some sort of uh, BIOS hack on them, you know, for, for yeah. memory timings and things like that to open up something. So I, I'm not, uh, my friends wouldn't be yes. worried about, you know. Your friends. Uh, yes, yeah. my friends wouldn't be worried about anything uh, coming out and saying that a driver implementation or a BIOS implementation would be affecting anything. Uh, and NVIDIA is even more open than AMD was at that time. There was the uh, NVIDIA inspector application that you could change around a lot of things, SLI support, um, um, any type of changes that you would need to do for mining as well. So they shouldn't be worried. <laughs> but if someone wants to trade their Mercedes uh, AMG S class for a 3080, I'm open to a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on to the end here. So again, notebook check confirmed as well. Uh, they use the same source, but they've confirmed what we just talked about on videocard.com. All right. So, last topic of the day, and probably the coolest topic. Oh! <laughs> the 3D effects of Voodoo 5 6000 comes back to life. Wow. So, on hot hardware, a hardware enthusiast named Anthony from Mod Labs had recreated a 3D effects 
uh, Room 5, 6,000. Uh, the company never released this card. They went belly up yeah. before this card was released. But this guy has managed to revive the Fallen, Fallen Graphics card and, and uh, to make it actually look new again. Yeah. So the Fudu 5 6000 was a single slot graphics card based on the VSA 100 die. Uh, basically, there was four of them connected together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was incredible. I mean, they had at the, back then this thing had two pixel shaders for <laughs> each die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically, eight of them total running at 166 megahertz. On the memory side, the Voodoo uh, 6000, 120 megabits of SD RAM clocked at 166 megahertz across 128 bit memory <laughs> inter- interface. Yeah. With a whopping 2.65 gigabits per second of memory bandwidth. Back then, that was impressive. If yeah. this was released, yeah. This could have this would have tanked the uh, GeForce. I think so. Yeah. Would, again, yeah. Depending on the price there. Yeah. Um, the Voodoo 5 6000 was certified for a TDP of 60 watts, which is more than the AGP slot could provide. Therefore, it drew a power enough, uh, 250 watts power brick, basically. Oh. Yep. From a power brick. It got power <laughs> from a power brick. <laughs> My God. It was never released. Uh, NVIDIA went up, belly up, basically. Not NVIDIA, sorry. 3FX went belly up, and NVIDIA bought the, out the resources. Yeah. That's it. Wow. That's all. That was actually very cool to see that. Yep. Did you own that's a Voodoo? That's it, that's all. I did. You did. Voodoo 2? I had a Voodoo 1 and Voodoo 2. Oh, man. Nice. That's awesome. Um, so, great topics. Um, and we usually have our little rant section at the end. Our, call it a conclusion or a rant. Um, I don't know. Did, you, just... have a, did, you, did you own a Voodoo? No, I had a Matrox. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> I had a Matrox, and it was... Uh, labeled as 24-bit versus the Voodoo, which was a 16-bit card. So it was something about the color, the color aspect being better on the Matrox. But uh, performance-wise, it sucked. So, <laughs> so my first real GPU was a Matrox, uh, something or rather. And that company also, well, they're they're not bankrupt, are they? They're still in business. They just don't do. Matrox does medical. Uh, that's it. That's a that's a big uh, <laughs> a big change. So, um. I don't know. Do you want to pick something out of today's list of things as our rant, or do you just want to talk about something that just well, drives you nuts? Week, what we've been doing the last week. There's Valheim playing. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, you're, you're gonna you're gonna come out with a 3070 uh, no commentary video. Hopefully today. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, it'll be a day before this video gets posted. So try and check that out. Uh, basically, I'll do a no commentary gameplay uh, on Valheim with an RTX 3070 at 2K resolution, which is. Um, a, I think the probably becoming the most popular gaming resolution right now, and I'll be posting that on my channel. It should be about 10-15 uh, minutes of gameplay. I do have one with the RTX 3080 right now. Very very disappointing performance. We'll see if the 3070 is any different. Maybe it'll be the same. Maybe it'll be better. Probably be worse. Will not be better. It no, it won't be, be better. better. No, that's for sure. I, I don't really know what to expect out of that. And uh, that game is gotten a lot of popularity and it's such a short period of time we we talked about that in our review uh, i don't know if this is just like a you know a weekend romance thing where it's going to blow over in a couple of weeks or if it's just going to grow into something massive um, we talked about that in my video i can leave a link to that in the description if you want to see that and um yeah so uh stay tuned uh wednesdays i do a tech review on a piece of tech um Fridays we do our discount game review and Mondays we introduce the chat chat video and Sundays there will be one gameplay video either from an RTX 3070 or an RTX 3080 pre-mining nerf edition. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I think you've got something in the works too about a overclocking guide to the RTX 3080. You do have one of the most fastest versions of a 3080. So we talked about that. You sh- you we're going to get something uh, going on that. So our users yeah, can... Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have an overclocking guide soon. Beautiful. Not sure when. Beautiful. Um, anything you want to rant about? <laughs> uh, there's nothing to rant about this week. Well, the mining hash, the ha- mining, the mining hack, I believe, it's not a, it's not a prosumer move, right? I mean, you, a lot of people yeah. who, I know, like I've been reading forums and uh, other videos, basically uh, watching their videos, basically, people buy these cards, and if you can buy this card. When they're not gaming, they hash. Yeah. They, they they mine. Yeah. 
it, what's the harm of one guy mining in his house, making a hundred bucks a month That's it. for his graphics card? That's it. Now he can't do it. Now he can't do it anymore. So to me, it's not really a prosumer move. Oh, you're right. And if you're taking something away from a product where it was able to do it before, then shouldn't you be reimbursing the consumer? Shouldn't I be getting a check back for, I don't know, two hundred dollars? You're no you're, you're taking away something from what I paid for that was able to do it when I bought it. So can I uh, can we smell class action lawsuit on this? <laughs> oh, my God, all he had to do was basically limit the GPU purchases to one per household, two per household max. But they did. They, no, they didn't. <laughs> didn't they do that? Didn't they say that? No. They just no, couldn't they enforce didn't. it. They can't enforce it. Figure out how to enforce it. Like, don't sell pallets of dyes to mining corporations. And you're in. Oh my god! Like some of these miners in the big ones in China are yeah. billion-dollar companies. Yeah. They can write their own bias. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, they course. can write their own drivers. So, I don't know if this is going to do anything. It's just going to harm uh, consumers, in my opinion. It will. It harms me. I mean, I'm not mining, but I don't like the fact that something is being taken away from my my GPU. Uh, I mean, for me, if I wanted to mine, I would dial back the drivers, right? That wouldn't affect me. But for newer versions coming out, well, that really sucks. So yeah. I don't yeah, like it. That, you know, there's that. Basically, that uh, was a, a rant. Uh, don't buy Rocket Lake, please. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the rant, do not buy Rocket Lake. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> if you need to buy now, look into AMD if you can find it. Uh, if not, last week we talked about all the games that you get with the 10... 10 um, 10 yeah, series CPUs? Not, no, the new Rocket Lake CPUs. Rocket Lake. Yeah. But no, it, sorry, no. No, no, right. it's Comet, the 10th. It's 10th. Comet it's Comet Lake. Lake. Yeah, right. You get uh, Lake. about $280 worth of games um, yep. for yep, a yep. CPU purchase. So um, if you want to go for the performance, get the AMD. If you want to go for a cool package deal like that and still have good performance as well, go for the Intel. Um, but don't buy Rocket Lake, yeah. Don't. <laughs> it's a bad time to be a hardware acquisition uh, <laughs> uh, enthusiast right now. Uh, we're having things taken away from us. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that. It doesn't sit well with me. No, it doesn't sit well with me either. What can you do at this point? Yeah, just buy more hardware. <laughs> you can't even buy it more. No, hardware. you can't. You can't buy it. Literally. I, I have a couple of friends that are trying to put a computer together, and they can't. So... Um, probably suggested them to get just everything else except the GPU and uh, play on the iGPU, play Overwatch because you can. <laughs> so, Jeez. so uh, if you have nothing else, uh, we can wrap this one up yeah, uh, for this week's up. episode of Tech Chat Chat, and uh, we'll see you guys next week with another list of cool and uh, controversial topics to discuss. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Later. Everyone.